Randy said to be ready and on the road by 6 o'clock, and it is 6.02, and we're waiting on him. Boy, oh boy, what a great start to this trip. Yes, I was a few minutes late leaving the driveway that morning, and yes, I was the one who set the 6 a.m. departure time, but I never thought that Adam would be ready to go that early. It was a hazy morning when we left Michigan, and it remained that way through most of Indiana and Ohio, but we made good time and arrived in Pittsburgh just before noon. That's where the 2023 biannual convention of the Pro Football Researchers Association was being held. Adam and I had never been to Pittsburgh before, and we were really looking forward to the event. The convention was held at the Drury Hotel in the downtown area. The building used to be a Federal Reserve Bank, and our meeting location was in what used to be the main vault in the basement. One look at the massive vault door to what is now a conference room, and you could tell that this was once a very secure location. There were three add-on trips during the convention. The first was a tour of the Heinz History Center and Western Pennsylvania Sports Museum. It was a fascinating place with tons of great things to see, like a statue of Franco Harris and displays on the history of football in the area. I'm always looking for unique football-related souvenirs whenever I travel, and I really struck gold at the museum's snack bar. Among the usual assorted candy bars and sodas, I found one that will now be on permanent display in my man cave, the Immaculate Confection. On Friday, there was another side trip, this time to the Latrobe Area Historical Society, about an hour away from Pittsburgh, but it was well worth the drive. The president of the Historical Society, Mary Lou Townsend, gave a great presentation on the town's connection to pro football. For years, Quarterback John Brawlier was recognized as the first professional football player when he accepted $10 to play for the Latrobe Athletic Association in 1895. In 1960, the NFL presented the town with a plaque that identified him as such. However, it was later discovered that Pudge Heffelfinger accepted money three years earlier in 1892, and he is now recognized as the first pro football player. When I found out that the plaque was still on display outside the local high school football stadium, I just had to get my picture taken with it. And so I did, along with my PFRA brother, Mike Barksdale. Latrobe is recognized as having the first pro football team in 1897 when all the players were paid to play. It is also the hometown of golfing legend Arnold Palmer and Fred Rogers of the TV show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It is also the birthplace of the Banana Split, and they have a festival every year. There were also plans for Latrobe to be the home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame before the NFL changed their mind and decided on Canton. The speakers on Friday night included two women from the Pittsburgh Passion of the Women's Football Alliance, owner Teresa Kahn and former quarterback and now co-head coach of the team, Lisa Horton. They talked about what it was like to own, play, and coach a women's pro football team as well as their relationship with Steelers great Franco Harris. Lisa has even graced the cover of the PFRA official magazine, The Coffin Corner, back in 2016. Other speakers that first night were Rudy Dix, author of the book The 63 Steelers, and Pete Peterson, who talked about the good and bad years of the Steelers. On Saturday morning, there was a PFRA business meeting where we learned about the number of current club members worldwide current and upcoming book projects, and possible future convention locations, among other topics. Saturday speakers included Joe Ziemba, who talked about the worst team in NFL history. And no, it wasn't the 0-16 Detroit Lions from 2008. Joshua Milton Anderson discussed the Philadelphia Eagles from 1933 to 1960, and Erin Grayson Sapp, who talked about her book, Moving the Chains, which included the story of how racism in New Orleans forced the black players to boycott the 1965 AFL All-Star Game. There was also a player panel on Saturday afternoon that included offensive lineman John Kolb, who played for the Pittsburgh Steelers from 1969 to 1981, winning four Super Bowls, and quarterback Dan Dara, who played for the Buffalo Bills from 1968 to 1970. The last speakers of the convention were Chris Willis from NFL Films, who talked about the Red Grange barnstorming tour of 1925 with the Chicago Bears, Ryan Christensen, 
author of the book Mill City Scrum, which is about the Minnesota Marines of the NFL, and Greg Tranter, who talked about the 1928 NFL champion Providence Steamroller. On Sunday, we took a tour of Acrisure Stadium and the Steelers Hall of Honor Museum. For Adam, he was excited to see the stadium where the 2012 movie The Dark Knight Rises was filmed. Being the huge Batman fan that he is, he showed up to the tour wearing his Gotham City Rogues t-shirt, representing one of the fictional football teams portrayed in the film. During the sequence, several Pittsburgh Steelers players and coaches were extras in the film, including former head coach Bill Cower, quarterback Ben Roethlisberger, and wide receiver Heinz Ward, who returned the kickoff during the sequence while the field was blowing up. Led by our tour guide, Dan, we got to see many parts of the stadium. We went down to the field, but we could not go onto it because they had just put down new sod. We got to spend some time in the Steelers' locker room before we went over to the far superior Pitt Panthers' locker room. We also got to walk through the FedEx Great Hall, which was chocked full of Steelers' history that included murals, retired jerseys, and their six Super Bowl trophies. Then it was on to the Steelers' Hall of Honor Museum, which is on the second floor of the stadium, and was full of more interesting artifacts and displays. There was even a booth where you could get a video of yourself calling one of five great plays in Steelers history. Adam and I chose to call the Immaculate Reception. But even after we left the stadium, there was yet another monument we discovered on the way back to our car. Right on the sidewalk was a monument commemorating the spot where the Immaculate Reception took place back in 1972. Once again, Mike and I had our picture taken by Adam. It was a great four-day convention of talking football with a bunch of like-minded football nerds. I was able to reconnect with PFRA brethren I haven't seen in a while, and Adam and I also made some new friends. We don't know where the PFRA's next convention will be in 2025, but wherever it is, we'll be there.